I know all of these fibers are getting cut. I don't know where they go right now to set them up though, so we'll just run this over them. All of these wires here are going to these guys right there. I'm just noticing that some of the wires here are sticking up almost to the end. That could get tricky. I was hoping to use a 3mm and possibly put two 3mm side by side to get a longer continuous light burst for any given section. However, I don't know that that's going to work. And looking at these guys now, there's certainly no way for me to pull them out to recut them. So that they're at a better length, or at least I don't think there is. One thing I hadn't considered when I was setting all these up was how uh, how far into the tubes these went. I had thought I cut them at a decent place, but in some cases apparently not. Now the question is going to be, can I pull some of these fibers out of place without disturbing all the others? So that's not too bad. Most of these I won't be able to do that trick with, and it looks like one of them is even still too long. And I won't be able to do that trick simply because there's too many layers of depth here. Let me show you. All this fiber optic is just piled on top of itself. There's three different layers there. And here's a look at all the tubes. And of course RGB LEDs are going into all of these guys there for the freezer tubes. All the red areas are where the landing gear goes so I can't have anything there whatsoever. So everything has to run in between those and this inner circle here is about where the central core is and there's going to be a sequencer right under that so I have to be careful about that as well. But as I mentioned all of these wires from this sequencer here are just going right there so I get to trim some as well. It looks like I'll be going with 5mm straw hats because those should, those sh should fill those tubes pretty well. And in fact, it looks like a 5mm is going to be just about perfect. This brass tube happens to be the exact diameter to hold it into place, so any fibers in there, none of them are going to be dark. However, these other tubes are just a little too wide overall, so there may be some dark fibers. That's the way that goes. Uh, you know, if I wanted to recut all of this, and I really don't, and I really don't think there's a need to either, and I think that's a little more important than anything else. The overall look is still going to work very well. So next up, I don't have to put resistors on these LEDs simply because that's already taken care of by the sequencer. All I have to do is wire these guys up plug them into place. One thing I will be doing is running multiple LEDs off of each wire and I'll have different things blinking at different times all across the ship. I want to get as much variety on the blinking as I can get going. So if two speeds are close to each other then uh, they'll fall out of sequence after a while and I think that'll help with a lot of variety with some faster stuff too. We'll see how it goes. I'll start working it out now. Alright, so I have installed the three cool whites here. There's room for three more, which I want on a different sequencer, which leaves a fourth color. So these are going to blink three, and then there's going to be a dark spot. I'm going to have this one fill that dark spot. 
And essentially, you could use that as a timer. If you don't want certain lights to come on for a very long time, you could put in a bunch, you could uh, put your reset way off at pin 7 when you're really only needed at pin 4 to get that extra time delay going on. That's an interesting uh, possible creative use right there. So I dropped a drop of super glue just to hold those in place. If they die, I got to replace them, which means I got to pull them out. So I don't want too much glue in there, just enough to keep them in place. Negatives are on the bottom line there. And I'm going to attach those as a common carrier to one wire, maybe two. I imagine you can get away with one. I'd like to cut away some of the excess. And then each of the positives is going to need its own line. And it doesn't matter which of the four of those is. The fourth one, I'm going to go and put over on uh, these blues here. Need five blue. So I pulled out five straw hats because, again, those are just about the correct diameter for the uh, LED. Next time I do this, I would make sure that I use the absolute correct diameter for what I want so there's no excess anywhere and the tubes are just big enough. As it happens, all five of these are going to be too large. But that's okay because the fiber optics in this case. So over here, on this, I'm going to put in the five blue. There's one down here and then four across the top there. Again, if I do this in the future, I would make sure that my tubes are exactly as big as the diameter of the LED. Right now, that's a lot of wiggle room for each of these, and it doesn't need to be there. If this was smaller fiber, this LED would be missing a lot of them, and they'd be dark. In this case, the fiber is so thick, I'm thinking that's 1.5 millimeter. Uh, there's no way that the LED is going to miss that. So with that in mind got a little creative wiring to do here it looks like in this case I will have this no. a single drop of glue to help hold the LEDs in place when I put them there maybe hopefully close enough I should probably chop these legs down a lot. These are very long legs and they don't need to be that long. But in this case I could probably wire all the negative legs together easy enough. Just kind of bending the legs into various shapes. All the wires here in this immediate location are about to get kind of tricky. You know, a little bit of glue that was still wet on that LED, it certainly freaking seals my skin together fast enough. Wouldn't want it to actually work on anything else though nice and fast would you no 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 pull you out push you back so those two lines can solder together and it'd be nice if I could get the negative legs to solder all together just so I have a common power carrier but I don't know how well that's gonna work and of course bending the legs means that the LEDs will support themselves all of a sudden. So I just had to do a memory dump. While I was waiting for the computers to do their thing I decided to do a little wiring of my own. And the fourth color is now wired to this blue LED. Getting those wires trimmed down that close was kind of tough because there was no room to really get the uh, cutters in there. So I used a razor blade and carefully nicked away the rubber. Over here, I just stretched out these two positive wires as far as they'd go. Now I got to trim off those. I've connected 
uh, let's see, this negative to that LED, but I've spread this negative to both of those LEDs. There shouldn't be any problem at all. And I might even fork another LED off of those later. We'll see about that. But I at least wanted to get this process on camera here. Basically, I'm stretching out the wire to see where it would go. Notate just shy of that with my thumbnail. Go over here with the wire strippers. And after trimming the wire down and slicing it right there, give it a little twist as you pull the rubber cover off. Then it's just going to be a matter of twisting this into place. Make sure it's not too tense or too loose. And uh, solder. Now when I power this up, I should be getting flashing LEDs above the uh, freezer tubes. And one thing I'll be doing is covering, or rather slathering, this entire section over with some rubber cement to help uh, insulate it. I'm hoping that'll help insulate it at least. I don't want any crosstalk. But before I get too carried away, I should power it up and make sure it works, huh? I see flashing lights. A little fast for my tastes, but that's okay. We're just getting them into place. Hey, look at all that. <laughs> nice. With another sequencer in there, that's definitely really going to add so much life to it. There's the blinking blue over there. Very, very happy. That's definitely the right color for those. Actually, while we got this up here, That's as dim as it'll go. And that's as bright. We'll bring it down to mid-tones. And then for speed, seem There's as slow as possible. A bit faster. I think the command consoles are going to be about this speed. I'm going to leave the next sequencer with a three count to do all the rest of the fibers on that. And these, let's get them at uh, I 
think I like that speed. Yeah, sweet. Fedoratron rules. So in a medium light, or a decent light, you can definitely barely see those computers going. Let's change the intensity just a little. Oh, that's full power right there. Yeah, somewhere before between half and full power may be the uh, brightness level I'm looking for. So with that first sequencer lighting test all complete, I'm anxious to move forward and I don't really want to go back and troubleshoot those other two boards at the moment. I'm going to because I do have to solder up a new pulsator and when I do that, I will go and check those two boards. I was just messing around with a place to fit this board and I think it'll go somewhere uh, over here behind the elevator. I'll get to that in a second. But while I was checking out where it could go, I had to reroute uh, this fiber optic here, and we'll look at that in a minute. And that had me looking at some other stuff, and that got me diverted into installing the RGB LEDs into the uh, freezer tubes. All I've done here is to hit a drop of CA right on the inside rim and then press the LED to that for a few seconds, and it's stuck pretty well. This is negative, that's positive, so on this one I this one actually runs into the landing pad. I've already cut a hole for that in the landing uh, gear bay rather itself. But I will have to have the wires coming out this way, otherwise negative will be on the outside and positive will be on the inside. And for this lone guy over here, I'm going to have to route wires down under there over here and into maybe under here somewhere just to keep it really tight and compact because I can't afford to get any more height going on uh, this thing really so what I was going to do now is simply glue the rest of these RGB's in, test them as I go along and then get back to where I'm going to put this other board and uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. 